Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. Last spring I did a video where I showed you the air conditioning I built for my boat. It runs uh, off small amounts of battery and you can air condition and have a nice sleep for like 100 amp hours of battery. In the interim, I looked into how to make these available to people and I found a guy that wanted to incorporate this into his business. Signed the contracts, it's taken a while to get all the supply together, but it's together. And in this video, I've got the first unit, the first kit. We're gonna install it on some friends boats and if I like it and I bless it, it's gonna be available for all of you to buy and you'll have a nice, cool summer on your boat. I'm here with Dave and Kendra today. They're thinking about putting air conditioning on their boat. So we're gonna chat to see if it's a good fit or not. Tell us about yourself, how long you've been sailing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, David and I have been sailing for about three years now. We left out of Manitowoc, Wisconsin, and been sailing the Great Lakes. Started off on a smaller boat and then gradually worked up to the S2. Uh -huh. And we've been cruising around. We sailed through the Great Lakes um, eight months ago and yeah. have been working our way south ever since. What did you do before you went sailing? Uh, I'm a nurse. So I was working as a nurse in Manitowoc for three years. And I was an engineer. Um, so we spent that time getting the boat ready and uh, uh, really outfitting it with the, the bare minimum that we thought we would need to go <laughs> cruising. And uh, uh, realized we needed more. <laughs> <laughs> realized we needed less. <laughs> Fewer clothes, of course. It's always right. less clothes than you think. OK, got to ask, because I'm an engineer. What kind of engineer? Uh, mechanical engineering and okay. uh, product development. Uh huh. Well, that's right up the air conditioner aisle now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. It's it's always a fun challenge to try to uh, fit new systems onto the boat and all the things that go with that. Uh huh. Yeah. We're in the Dominican Republic, and this is as far south as you guys have been by boat, right? It is. Okay. First time out of the U.S. actually, too. So we're planning on eventually heading towards Grenada for hurricane season, so mm -hmm. further south yet. Yep. <laughs> well, it's only going to get hotter <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as the year marches on. So have you guys thought of air conditioning before? Have you done any research beyond, you know, my fine offering? <laughs> we have. We okay. thought we could sweat it out because it, generally they're just way too expensive and us doing things on a budget. Yeah. It kind of blew that budget. The physical size yeah. of most units, too, like, it, we don't have enough space for the traditional large Danfoss compressor and any of the uh, air exchange units that come with it. So, um, you know, our take on this was just... Uh, we have to kick it to the curb. It can't happen. Yeah, but yeah. after seeing Clark's first video about the uh, efficiency of this unit, uh, we realized that the amount of battery power that we've already got with the solar that's charging it is plenty to run this and it's affordable not right. to mention that it'll fit so, right. <laughs> I mean it's it's almost a no-brainer for us at that point yeah. it's a, really a, a comfort thing that we can't turn down <laughs> let's talk about your expectations about this this isn't a massive air conditioner, the whole boat air conditioner as you know uh, is that good for you well, we're fortunate because we have an aft cabin in the boat um, so that's where we sleep at night and we're able to close off that space and ideally, uh, with this unit, be able to cool the whole uh, bedroom, as it were, mm -hmm. and um, sleep good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a get a good night's rest um, when it's very hot and humid. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't think people should air condition their whole boat. Um, if you do that, it's not just that you might be running a generator or something to keep up with it. More importantly, you're not getting the cruising experience because you find yourself just living in a cave and you might as well just stay home in a marina and plug in. So you need to be able to acclimatize to the weather and when you get hot, jump in the beautiful ocean. But at night, you just have no choice but to sweat. And I find that that is more so when you get in a buggy place because you have to close down. And even if you screen up, that really cuts down on the airflow or when it rains. You would think rain would be cooling. It isn't because you have to close everything down. So I guess you guys are accepting that limitation. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a fine line between uh, roughing it and, and living minimal. Um, 
-hmm. And, uh, and big... the less laundry we got to do, the better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's uh, another thing, right? Um, you, one keeps their clothing in the cabin they sleep in, you know, usually. And if you do, that clothing is going to get dried out by the air conditioner and you don't get mildew growth. You don't see a lot of cruisers with white because they've all turned black with mildew stains and this might help that. Yeah, yeah. It's our first year of the cruising experience has exceeded all expectations, but uh, there's definitely some sacrifices and this is one of those positions that we just decided that we're not, well, we don't want to compromise and uh -huh. <laughs> have to uh, have a poor night's sleep and, um, yeah. Okay, so it looks like you've got a very good idea of how you're going to use it in your lifestyle. Now, how are you going to feed it? I'm really proud of this unit I put together from one point of view in particular, how efficient it is. To compare it, uh, the next best one available is the Mabru, and it's a slightly bigger unit, only slightly. Uh, it costs three times as much, and it uses apparently twice the electricity this one uses to do the same work. So, yeah, I like my, I like my engineer. I'm very proud of it. But how are you going to feed it? What do you have for batteries and uh, a charging system? Yeah, we outfitted the boat with uh, 560 watts of solar. Uh, and that feeds into a 280 amp hour lithium bank, um, supported as a, a, by a backup lead acid bank as well. Mm -hmm. um, most days we go to bed with the batteries fully topped off and then the refrigerator freezer running overnight, that barely puts a dent in it. So we wake up in the morning with power to spare and then the sun comes out again. Uh -huh. So we'd like to put that extra power to use and make it work for us. Sure. Um, on Temptress, just to compare, uh, we have only 200 amp hours of lithium. That is all we really use. And we've been running this air conditioner for several years and never had an issue in the morning. Our fridge and freezer is a little more power hungry than yours. And the main computer we use, which is on an awful, awful, awful lot with a big 3000 watt inverter, um, is also a hungry beast. And, and we're doing that with the air conditioning on 200. I think the absolute minimum I would recommend is a 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. Um, probably more just for the air conditioner or just to add for the air conditioner, but geez, that's like the smallest one you can buy anyway. So, um, it, it, it looks like if you have any lithium at all, this should run off lead too. I, um, and it will, it certainly will run off lead. It's just lead has that thing where it goes way down in voltage when you discharge and way up in voltage. So it's not as efficient. Um, and besides get lithium, add it to your lead and buy one of my BBMSs, but that's a different video. <laughs> Your solar is only slightly lower than our 900 uh, watts, uh, but our 900 watts is terribly shadowed. Uh, I knew that putting it in, um, and we're still just fine. So I think your 500 should be fine, but you have a way of augmenting in case? Yeah, uh, well, space being the premium on the boat, we put as much solar out as we could carry, realistically, uh -huh. and then we have a two kilowatt uh, gasoline generator if we do need to top off. Um, and the auxiliary diesel as another way to charge the batteries. Sure, but I don't think you're gonna have that problem. I think you've got plenty, and especially when you get further south. Yeah, we've been fortunate so far, and the generator just lives to run the water maker, and uh, otherwise the sun is providing for us, and mm -hmm. should be more of that where we're going. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it looks like you've got a good solid electrical system to run this thing on. Now let's talk about whether there's space to fit it in your boat. This is it. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, it's, it's all in this box. It weighs, what was it, 22 pounds when it was shipped in. I'm, I'm surprised how, how light it actually is all in one place. The first thing you need room for is the compressor. This, believe it or not, is the compressor. <laughs> Miniature. It is. It's, um, it's a military compressor that, uh, you know, they, they made very specific specifications and this meets them. Um, it's, it's very small, but this is the most expensive part by far. And you can't get that just anywhere, can you? No, no. Um, where you get these, they won't sell them to you. You basically have to be a defense contractor. Um, not because it's like secret, just because they don't want to deal with selling one at all. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this, this is the condenser. And these two kind of live real near each other. Usually a compressor pumps the refrigerant gas to a higher pressure. And it pumps it into here. 
And if you want a detail on how all this works, we have this video that I did a, a detailed series on how refrigeration works. Same for air conditioning. So it goes into here, and what this is is a tube inside a tube. So the refrigerant goes between the two tubes, but salt water from the ocean goes on the inner tube, and that takes heat away. All the, the refrigerant's under high pressure, so it's hot, and its heat can go in uh, to the salt water and be dumped overboard. Now, the thing that amazes me is to do these right for salt water, so they won't corrode, so they have some uh, protection from growth. You know, you don't want oysters growing inside. You made them out of something called copper and nickel. It's very expensive and it's very heavy because it's copper based. This is titanium. <laughs> this is like the newest thing. And it's actually, uh, the inner tube is kind of corrugated inside, so there's a huge amount of surface area. And it apparently is what all the merchant marine stuff is using now because it's really good for biological growth. It's very light and it's very, very corrosion resistant. But feel that thing, mechanical engineer guy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Titanium. <laughs> so these two, um, they can be mounted anywhere really, but usually, I mean, if you want to have the minimum space, I kind of recommend they get mounted basically like that. So that requires about 10 inches by 10, by 10 inches, maybe a little more for the hoses to make the turn, depending on what elbows you use. By, it's like 10 inches, but then you need room for the hoses to go off. Do you have a space for that dreamed up? We got just the spot right under the uh, aft cabin bunk. Okay. Let's see what's next. This is a filter dryer. Um, I spec a good one, so this should be a good one. And uh, it, this takes the refrigerant and filters it. And if you ever got any moisture in your refrigeration, this will keep it cleaned out. If you look at the filter dryer in your um, refrigerator for your boat, it's just a little widening in the copper tubing with just some desiccant jammed in it. And uh, this one is actual proper cone-shaped filter, and it's professional. Right. I like this little pump. Well, that's why I spec it. It's by uh, Johnson Pumps, and it's um, magnetically coupled. So there's no shaft coming from the motor that goes right into the pump section. So there's no seals to fail. It's actually a magnet that kind of connects them. So badness can't happen inside there. And they went so far as to kind of have this really nice connector that's pretty much waterproof sealed to lock in. So that's what will pump your salt water. It's centripetal. This will go down in your bilge someplace. It has to be below the water line because it's not self-priming. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll go near your uh, through hole and you need a strainer going into it. You can fit that almost anywhere. Yeah. Might be the best quality pump we have on board. <laughs> this is your boost converter, and parts of this system require uh, 24 volts. So this will step up the voltage. I know that sounds like it's not perfectly efficient, but all the numbers on that other video, I'm running through a boost converter. This can go anywhere in your electrical system, between your switch panel, you know, where the power comes to drive it, to where the compressor is parked. This is a little hose that he put together, and I don't, I didn't do it this way. He did it this way, and it's so much better. Um, it's proper refrigeration hose, and it goes between the compressor and the condenser so that any vibration, it can be absorbed in hose because it's a pretty short run. And also, it's kind of hard to make hard bends, but this takes care of that for you. Awesome. Something he just decided to add. And, um, I mean, he's, I, I'm not letting him cut corners, but then I look at what he's done, and he's not cutting corners. He's going extra. So both of us are kind of doing that. Let's see what we got here. Okay, this is the control circuitry for the compressor itself. It's all the smarts of the system. This will be mounted right by the compressor because you want to keep these uh, runs pretty short. And also, there's a lot of uh, logic lines that go to things right in that deal. So this goes in that 10 inch by 10 inch space. We'll get to it in a minute, but um, the the uh, air handler has a fan, and it has a speed control. I didn't like it. I didn't like it one little bit. It's done in an automotive way, and it's inefficient. This is a, uh, a speed control, and it, it will uh, send pulse width modulation to the uh, motor and run it at any speed as efficiently as it can be run. Here's your thermostat. And obviously, you have to mount this 
someplace where you can read it and see it. Uh, it's interesting. It doesn't just turn on and off based on temperature. It'll also turn on and off based on humidity. So when it gets uncomfortable because of humidity, it'll also come on. And uh, what else about it? Um, I have found that for me, it's too bright. So I put like some sunglass material, some, some smoked plastic on it, but you can also just not mount it right over your bed like I did, which was the mistake. So you might want to mount this at some distance. Uh, all the fittings and stuff you need, well, not all. There's some things you should, um, you'll, you'll have to add for sure. You'll have to add the hoses for the plumbing and you know, you get through all stuff. Since we're out here and we don't know the hardware stores, he sent us uh, some copper tubing. Awesome. This is what's called a potentiometer. It's um, eventually will be how you control the speed of the compressor, but that's a set it and forget it thing for most people. And then finally, the thing that I've been digging down to to show, this is the air handler. It's the part that mounts like near your bed. It's where the cold air comes out and the moist air goes in. And uh, when I saw which one he had used, I realized because I saw your boat before. You know that bar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's like it's custom made to go in an S2. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to find a place to mount this. We can put this in this way too, but I think on yours it would go this way. And as long as that allows enough room for the hoses and the things back here, uh, I think we'll do that. All right. So, to have enough room, you need to have a place for the air handler, and this has to be fairly close to where you're going to want the cold air. Though you can put tubes on here too. Bend it out. You feel that this will fit in the back? You can handle the aesthetics of it? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Uh, you need to have a place to put this little box in your wiring somewhere along the where you feed it. And you need about a 10 by 10 by maybe 12, 14 inch space for the actual compressor. All right. I think we can make that work no problem. Okay. So it looks like um, you've got enough power to feed it. You've got enough physical space to mount it, and you have a reasonable expectation for what it can do. Um, let's give you an air conditioner. We're All ready. right. <laughs> We're going to do another video on the actual installation process, and then we'll do one on the charging, because a lot of you have never charged a, uh, a refrigerator before. Uh, this will be, uh, it's actually very doable, and you can do it with parts from the hardware store, so, or well, the auto parts store. So uh, we'll um, do those two videos and you'll be an expert on whether you can do this yourself or not. Thanks a lot for letting us use your boat to be the guinea pig or the second guinea pig to try this out on. Um, are you ready to have a nice cool night's sleep? Yeah, for uh, sure. Absolutely. The honor is all ours. <laughs> Thank you. We're really excited to have an air conditioner and can't wait to start using it. A good night's sleep is just one install away. <laughs> good deal.